I wanted to share with you what patients will expect when they when they come here in advance and if they have any tools accessible online I thought it'd be a good idea to give them a little bit of visual of what's removed so they have this diagnosis of prostate cancer but they're thinking where is this gland where is it removed and when they come here to see Dr. Menon he might give them a lot of fancy jargon and sometimes they leave and they might get a little confused so me being the nurse I like to explain things in a lay term <laughs> and show them a little bit of lay uh, visuals too to go along with it. So I just wanted to show not only what's removed, what is salvaged, what is spared, show uh, a little animated drawing here and uh, I can explain things in a simple fashion hopefully. Here's the the bladder, prostate, the urethra and I'm just going to run through what is removed with the prostatectomy. The prostate's removed as well as the seminal vesicles and this is a side view so what you're seeing is a uh, a nerve bundle that would be on the left side and everything would be duplicated on the other side as well. This is the standard nerve and what branches off of the main nerve are minor nerves, what Dr. Menon has termed the veil of Aphrodite. And so they will talk to the patient about nerve sparing techniques and a surgical plan when they come. When a man is going to have this surgery, it's important that they start Kegel exercises just to help with their urinary control. This diagram, you cannot see it, but with the prostate is an internal sphincter that's at the neck of the bladder and there's also an external sphincter at the apex of the prostate down here. When you look at this muscle band of tissue, that's where their secondary sphincter is located and that is the sphincter that is spared, usually with surgery. I'm gonna punch in a little prostate tumor there in the prostate. They actually cut at the neck of the bladder and they cut at the apex, trying not to get too much into this muscle if there is cancer located at the apex of the gland, sometimes a little bit more of that muscle has to be taken uh, and some patients may have some problems with ongoing incontinence. But in due time, that usually is recovered. In this example, the standard nerve was spared and not the veil. The bladder is then brought down, reattached to the apex area, sutured, and those sutures take almost about six weeks to completely heal. Uh, if patients get a Foley catheter, that is what a Foley catheter looks like, which is a penile catheter. Now these days, what Dr. Menon does is does a little punch into the abdominal wall and he punches in a suprapubic catheter and that is the catheter-less procedure. What I like about this catheter, it has a little stopcock valve, if you will, and this valve is turned uh, roughly 48 hours prior to coming back to see us to have their catheter removed and the patients are able to uh, cycle, what we call a cycling procedure, to actually test and see if they're urinating well with control, without control, or, or likewise, and they like that feature. It also tells me that if they are not urinating because of, there's a little bit of swelling yet at the stitches, that may happen, and patients sometimes have to delay the catheter coming out, so instead of having to put a catheter back in, we just have them open the valve up, and it saves a lot of trauma to the patients. Back in the older days when we just did Foley catheters, patients would have their catheters removed at a certain period of time and if patients can't urinate then unfortunately I have to put the Foley catheter back in. So this really uh, is a nice feature to this uh, and uh, you know it's it's not too uncomfortable. It's not too uncomfortable removing it either. The suprapubic catheter is uh, a nice feature that we started doing several years ago and uh, since I've been with Dr. Menon, we originally did the Foley catheters and now that we do the suprapubic catheters, patients love them. They have the freedom of moving around without something dangling out of their male member and they're a lot more comfortable and a lot less penile irritations. For some reason, men really have this fear of having a Foley catheter in and uh, you know, I guess I could understand why, but the suprapubic catheter is a it's easy to manage. We have staff that show patients how to manage it before they're discharged from the hospital. Because the rectum is very close proximity to where these stitches are located, we would ask that you stay on a stool softener for about two weeks until the healing has been adequate. They have emergency contact numbers to call us if they have any questions. Um, you know, I find that most patients do quite well 